I was 14. For the third year in a row, my parents had sent me to a summer camp in New York State. One afternoon, our counselor announced that we were going for a hike in the woods. He had been seized by an inspiration and wasn't going to let anyone talk him out of it. And so, after the rest period that followed lunch, a whole gang of 16 or 18 boys, along with two or three counselors, set off into the woods. Everyone was in a fairly buoyant mood, I remember, and half an hour or so into the trek, most people agreed that the outing had been a good idea. No one had a compass, of course, or the slightest clue as to where we were going, but we were all enjoying ourselves, and if we happened to get lost, what difference would that make? Sooner or later, we'd find our way back. Then it began to rain. At first, it was barely noticeable, a few light drops falling between the leaves and branches, nothing to worry about. We walked on, unwilling to let a little water spoil our fun, but a couple of minutes later, it started coming down in earnest. Everyone got soaked, and the counselors decided we should turn around and head back. The only problem was that no one knew where the camp was. The woods were thick, dense with clusters of trees and thorn-studded bushes, and we had woven our way this way and that, abruptly shifting directions in order to move on. To add to the confusion, it was becoming hard to see. The woods were dark to begin with, but with the rain falling and the sky turning black, it felt more like night there. Then the thunder started, and after the thunder, the lightning started. The storm was directly on top of us, and it turned out to be the summer storm to end all summer storms. I have never seen weather like that, before or since. The rain poured down on us so hard that it actually hurt. Each time the thunder exploded, you could feel the noise vibrating inside your body. Immediately after that, the lightning would come, dancing around us like spears. It was as if weapons had materialized out of thin air. A sudden flash that turned everything a bright, ghostly white. Trees were struck, and the branches would begin to smolder. Then it would go dark again for a moment, there would be another crash in the sky, and the lightning would return in a different spot. The lightning was what scared us, of course. It would have been stupid not to be scared, and in our panic, we tried to run away from it. But the storm was too big, and everywhere we went, we were met by more lightning. It was a helter-skelter stampede, a headlong rush in circles. Then, suddenly, someone spotted a clearing in the woods. A brief dispute broke out whether it was safer to go into the open or continue to stand under the trees. The voice arguing for the open one, and we all ran in the direction of the clearing. It was a small meadow, most likely a pasture that belonged to a local farm. And to get to it, we had to crawl under a barbed wire fence. One by one, we got down on our bellies and inched our way through. I was in the middle of the line, directly behind Ralph. Just as he went under the barbed wire, there was another flash of lightning. I was two or three feet away, but because of the rain pounding against my eyelids, I had trouble making out what happened. All I knew was that Ralph had stopped moving. I figured that he had been stunned, so I crawled past him under the fence. Once I was on the other side, I took hold of his arm and dragged him through. I don't know how long we stayed in that field. An hour, I would guess. And the whole time we were there, the rain and thunder and lightning continued to crash down upon us. It was a storm ripped from the pages of the Bible. And it went on and on and on, as if it would never end. Two or three boys were hit by something, perhaps by lightning, perhaps by the shock of lightning as it struck the ground near them. And the meadow began to fill with their moans. Other boys wept and prayed. Still others, fear in their voices, tried to give sensible advice. Get rid of everything metal, they said. Metal attracts the lightning. We all took of our belts and threw them away from us. I don't remember saying anything. I don't remember crying. Another boy and I kept ourselves busy trying to take care of Ralph. He was still unconscious. We rubbed his hands and arms. We held down his tongue so he wouldn't swallow it. We told him to hang in there. After a while, his skin began to take on a bluish tinge. His body seemed colder to my touch. But in spite of the mounting evidence, it never once occurred to me that he wasn't going to come around. 
I was only 14 years old after all. And what did I know? I had never seen a dead person before. It was the barbed wire that did it, I suppose. The other boys hit by lightning, went numb, felt pain in their limbs for an hour or so, and then recovered. But Ralph had been under the fence when the lightning struck, and he had been electrocuted on the spot. Later on, when they told me he was dead, I learned that there was an eight-inch burn across his back. I remember trying to absorb this news and telling myself that life would never feel the same to me again. Strangely enough, I didn't think about how I had been right next to him when it happened. I didn't think one or two seconds later, and it would have been me. What I thought about was holding his tongue and looking down at his teeth. His mouth had been set in a slight grimace. And with his lips partly open, I had spent an hour looking down at the tips of his teeth. 34 years later, I still remember them. In his half-closed, half-open eyes, I remember those too.